I start my day sitting down at Aria playing 510 No Limit buying in for $5,000. Unfortunately the game had zero action and after 30 minutes I decided to walk over and play 510 No Limit at the Old Faithful Bellagio and it's a good thing I did because this ends up being one of the craziest, most action packed poker sessions I've played in a very long time. The first hand I play, I get pocket tens and raise to $60 over two limps in the small blind, get a couple callers and lose this pot being down around $200. There is an under the gun straddle in this next hand at $20. I look down in early position at king queen of spades, a beautiful hand and raise it up here to $50. There's a middle position player who calls before the straddle bumps it up himself to $220. Now the straddler started the hand with around $600 and if we think of that as big blinds, it's only 30 big blinds. Now with all this dead money in the middle, I feel like our options are go all in or fold. And with king queen suited for under 30 bigs, I decide to just rip it all in. I'm flipping against his under pairs. He could have some worse Broadway cards, maybe some ace high hands that we're flipping against as well. So I jam all in for $1,500 effective. The middle position player thinks for a while and folds. And the under the gun straddler makes a call. Not much time for me to get settled in. I'm already all in within the first orbit here. The flop comes out king high, which seems pretty good for me. Turn is a jack, not the best card. River brick. I show the king queen and under the gun shows pocket aces. Well, pocket aces seems pretty good. That's a pretty nice hand to get in the straddle as well. You could say that this was somewhat of a punt going all in here with king queen suited, but... For less than 30 big blinds, I think it's somewhat of a standard play. Next hand I raise under the gun, ace jack suited at 30 bucks. Cutoff player calls and small blind player calls as well. Just to preface this hand, both players who call me are definitely recreational players leaning on the action side. Seem to be here having some fun. The flop comes out 10, 7, 4, 2 hearts. We flop the nut flush draw and 2 over cards. Small blind checks. I decide to check. The cutoff player bets $50. When the small blind player calls $50, I think this is a great spot to put in a check raise. On 10, 7, 4, 2 hearts, I don't expect my opponents to have any two pair holdings on this board, calling $30 preflop. They also didn't three bet preflop either, so we can expect them to not have hands like aces, kings, queens, or jacks. Given the fact that the cutoff player bet 50 and the small blind player just flat called with me behind him on a super wet and connected board, I don't think the small blind player is going to have anything better here than just one pair. He can have a lot of straight draws, flush draws, gut shots, 7x and 4x hands. So with my particular hand of ace, jack of hearts, two over cards, and the nut flush draw, backdoor straight draws as well, I think it's a great spot to put some pressure on here. So I decide to raise it up. I make it $200. Both opponents started the hand with less than $1,000, so less than 100 big blinds. The cutoff player has a little bit less as well, around $700 to start the hand. He thinks for about 20 seconds and calls $200. Small blind player calls as well, so not really what we are wanting to see. Three players now going to the turn. We're looking for some help, which we don't really get, but we do pick up more outs. It's the queen of diamonds, so now we pick up a straight draw as well as two over cards, the 10, and still obviously having the nut flush draw. With the small blind player checking over to me, I'm just never folding in this spot, and I think the best play is to just jam it all in. This is what I would do with all my value hands as well, so let's go for it. I rip my entire stack in there with ace high, hoping for some folds, and if I get called, maybe we can hit one of our many outs. The cutoff player doesn't think for too long and ships his $500 in there. Small blind player does fold. So now we're heads up, all in again, looking for some help on the river. You win. Nice hand. River three of diamonds and we completely brick everything and it gets worse when I see my opponent's hand of six seven off suit for a pair of sevens. He called a check raise with second pair and then called an all in with third pair. We had so many outs and we missed everything. 
This is like a Robbie Jade Lou hand. How the hell did he call off his entire stack with a seven? What is going on here? This is one of the sicker calls I've seen calling all in with third pair and he held up to get the full double up. Nice hand man. This guy just wanted some action here. I end up playing some big pots with him in the future as well. He's pretty wild and he's not scared to put all his money in the middle. I get moved over to the main game and the same player I doubled up with king queen of spades versus his pocket aces limps in middle position. I raise ace four suited to $40 in the small blind and he calls so we're heads up out of position to a 4-3 deuce flop making top pair top kicker and a gut shot straight draw. I bet $60 and he makes the call. Turn card is pretty good it's another four. We do have a very disguised strong hand on this board. My opponent probably doesn't expect me to have many 4x holdings when I raise out of the small blind. I'm just going to continue to put the pressure on here, hoping he has an over pair that he limped in pre-flop with. Maybe pocket 7s, 6s, pocket 5s, pocket 8s, maybe an ace high hand, or he could even have a worse 4x hand. I bet 110 bucks, and he comes along with a call pretty quickly. The river card's a 7, which is pretty much a total brick. It does improve pocket 7s to a full house, but other than that, I feel like if we are ahead on the turn, we're still ahead here on the river. I decide to go with a big bet of $400. My opponent has about $750 left, and he ships it all in. I make the snap call and show my ace 4, and he shows... 5-6. He flopped a straight. We turn trips. A pretty sick cooler in this hand. He slow played it and got the complete max. This is now the second time we doubled up this opponent. I just don't really see a world of me ever getting away from this hand. When I bet $400 on the river and he goes all in for only $390 more. With a hand as strong as ours, we just cannot ever be folding. If he did have more money like $1,500 or $2,000, I do think I could bet fold on this river. But versus these stack sizes, I just don't think there's much I can do. I end up doubling this guy up again and now I'm stuck probably close to $3,000 on this session. I have been playing fairly aggressive in this session, going all in with King Queen suited, which I think is an aggressive play, but still somewhat standard. Check raising Ace Jack of Hearts and then going all in on the turn. Again, a pretty aggressive play, but also seems pretty standard as well. And then now this hand, just losing a pretty big pot trips versus a flopped straight. I don't know. I don't know if I'm playing bad or if I'm just playing a little bit too aggressive or if I'm just running bad as well. Really the only thing you can do in this situation is just reach into your pocket, add on more chips and try to get back in there which is what I do. I wait about 30 minutes before picking up red pocket aces. Alright, this is my shot to get my money back. Two players from early position call $10. I raise to $60. The big blind calls $60. Under the gun, limper calls $60. Under the gun, plus one. Limper calls $60. Four ways to jack, seven, jack. Ugh, Jesus. Maybe this is not the best board for aces. Are we going to lose another big one? When it checks to me, I'm just going to bet here. If I get raised, I can put my opponent on a better hand. I bet out $70. Big blind folds, under the gun player makes the call, and under the gun is the same guy who called me with 6-7 earlier, all in with third pair. We're now heads up to the turn. 10 of diamonds, he checks again, and like I said, this guy is obviously a call happy player. He called all in for over $500 with third pair when I was bluffing with a flush draw. He saw that hand as well, so when I actually do have the goods, I gotta keep betting here. I don't think he's ever gonna be folding a pair or a draw. I make it $200. He doesn't think for too long and decides $200 sounds good to him and he ends up making the call. From watching him play and his mannerisms, the way he handles chips, I'm pretty sure this guy is a pretty novice player so it's not out of the question he could be slow playing a jack here, maybe pocket sevens, just not really understanding the game too much. He could just be calling because that's really all he knows what to do. So I do have to tread a little bit lightly here going to the river until we see an ace on the last card giving us a full house. The second best hand you can get. He checks over to me and with about $550 left in his stack, I think there's just one option here. Any time you call something, yeah, what's your best stack? I have no idea. 
I go all in for his last $550. He doesn't snap fold, which is good, but he's thinking, will he call? Will he fold? What is he gonna do? He's mulling over his options and eventually he stacks up his chips and shoves them into the middle. We are getting paid off here. Pocket aces are good and we get a little bit back. We were stuck over $3,000 and just like that, we get back over $1,000 in this hand. Not the best start of the session, doubling up three players back to back to back, but just like that, now we have $2,700 in our stack. The action player from the last hand leaves, but then returns 15 minutes later with a $1,000 stack. That is always great news to see. I raise it up here with pocket fours, the button player, the action player from the last hand calls, and the blinds call as well. Four ways to ace, eight, four, two spades, flopping bottom set, multi-way on an ace high board. It really just cannot get too much better than that, but I can't get too ahead of myself. There's definitely a lot of ways for me to lose this hand. I bet out $70 and the action player on the button makes the call and the blinds fold. Heads up now, pretty good situation and especially when the turn is another four. Making quads the best hand possible. All right, I feel pretty confident now. I bet out $140. There's a flush on the board. There's an ace on the board. He can have all sorts of hands here. He doesn't really think for too long and calls. Great news for us, maybe we can get him again in a big pot. The river card, I think is one of the best cards in the deck. It's another ace. The reason this card is so good is because he's played this hand a lot like he has an ace X holding. An ace X holding with call the flop, an ace X holding with call again on the turn. And if he has an ace, he now made a full house versus our quads. I don't think he's ever folding a full house. So I go for glory here and jam all in for his last $700. Praying he has an ace, a flush, maybe even an eight he doesn't want to fold. Like I said before, this guy called off a $550 bet on the turn with third pair. He called off a big all in on the river in the last hand with nothing. So I'm going for it all here in this hand. Unfortunately, he folds fairly quickly. Later, he told me he had the king of spades for the nut flush draw on the turn. Of course, I have to show the pocket fours for the quads and we get another pot shipped in our direction. I'm just now noticing while editing this video that I played five hands so far for this vlog and each hand I've been all in, which is pretty insane. I don't think that's ever happened on this channel where every single hand I played for the vlog, I've been all in. It's pretty crazy, but the action does not stop here. There's still some other big pots to play. A sick hand coming up next where there's an under the gun straddle to $20. It folds to me in the cutoff and I peel back ace queen offsuit. I bump it up here to $60. The cutoff player who looks like a solid pro, three bets me to 170. The big blind, the six seven offsuit guy, the guy we stacked with aces and the guy we hit quads against calls $170. The straddle player calls $170 as well, and now the action is back over on me. I have to figure out what I want to do in this situation. I got three bet by the button, two cold callers. I could call this bet and go out of position multi-way. I could fold ace-queen offsuit, or I could put in another raise. Like I said before, the player on the button seems like a solid pro, which definitely comes into factor here. A lot of these solid pros at Bellagio go with a three bet or fold strategy preflop, which means he can have a lot of hands that he's three betting here on the button, not just aces, kings, and queens. He can have some suited connectors, suited wheel aces, smaller pocket pairs, offsuit broadways, suited broadways as well. The button player who three bet me started the hand with $1,700, which is less than 100 big blinds when the $20 straddle's on. The big blind player and the straddle have less than 100 big blinds as well. So I think to myself, look, there's so much dead money in the middle. I don't really want to call and go multi-way. I don't want to fold ace queen. After thinking over my options, I decide I'm going to put in another raise, but I got to figure out what sizing I want to go. And with all this dead money in the pot, less than 100 big blinds, I think the best sizing is just all of my chips. Let's stick with the trend of this video. We've been all in every single hand so far. Let's continue that. I decided to go for it. All in.
This is another fairly aggressive play. Now we could still have the best hand here. It's definitely not out of the question that the button could have king jack, king queen, ace jack. A lot of the time he's probably gonna have hands like pocket tens, pocket jacks, nines, maybe ace queen himself. After thinking for roughly a minute, he decides to let go of his hand and I feel like we're gonna take all this money down pre-flop until the big blind, the action player, the guy who hates to fold, ships his entire stack in there about eight hundred dollars going into the middle with him the straddle player makes the fold we're all in again the fourth time with this particular player let's see what happens A great run out for us when I end up making a straight and even better when my opponent shows king six offsuit. Well, he was definitely here to gamble and we end up getting more chips pushed in our direction. A crazy swingy session so far. Honestly, probably one of the craziest sessions I've played here in Vegas from being down over $3,000 to making full houses, quads, and now a huge all in. Our stack is now up to about $4,000. Unfortunately, I still think I'm stuck on this session, even with a $4,000 plus dollar stack. Over the next hour and a half, the action on the table really slows down. Some players leave and some more pros end up coming in. They end up starting up a new 10-20 must move table with a few recreational players. So I decided to take my chips to the cage and cash out my $10 chips and get some $20 chips, take it over to the table there. I buy in for around $4,000 to $5,000 at the 10-20 game. I sit there for about an hour, some recreational players end up leaving, the game breaks, and I end up calling it a night. Well, that may have been one of the most crazy, action-packed, swingiest poker sessions I've played in a very long time. Started out doubling up three people back to back to back. I was all in, boom, boom, boom. Lost every single one of them. I was probably down over $3,000 right off the bat. Then things started coming around and changing in our direction. Pocket aces, rivering a full house, winning that hand. Then flopped a set of fours, turned quads, and won there. And then the last notable hand of the night ace queen four bet jam all in and a straddle pot and got called by king six offsuit and we held but couldn't quite get out of the hole ended up losing thirteen hundred dollars total today about two hundred dollars here at aria where i played like 23 minutes but i'm back here to get my car and then it's time to get some sleep i'm pretty tired i don't know if you can tell by my eyes but uh yeah, I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm still here for another five days. More Vegas vlogs to come for you guys, but I'm going to get some sleep and be back at it tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, please like the video. Comment down below if you have any questions. It helps grow the channel as well by liking the video, by commenting, pushes the video out to new people, and hopefully more people can see my videos. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. That is it for this one. Until next time, I'll see you.